Hey gardeners, today we're talking irrigation. So background, um, a lot of the advice that I'm going to give you in this video, it's from my experience of gardening in the Phoenix, Arizona area, where we see temperatures up to an extreme high of 125. So unlike other parts of the country where they get adequate rainfall, sometimes irrigation isn't even a factor. They can just rely on rainfall to keep their plants hydrated. That's not the case in our environment. Beyond breaking down all the components that you'll need for your irrigation system, I'm gonna show you mine running and we'll talk through some of the design. But I basically use a hybrid approach where I have my main lines in PVC, three quarter inch. Then I run polytubing off of those main lines to various zones in my garden to actually water the trees. So there are going to be different configurations that you can choose for your sprinkler system, but in general, you should have something like you see in front. This is a backflow preventer, and this is what I use in between my main water line that's coming out of the wall here. All right, this is from City Water. Here's a T that feeds a hose bib, and then this is a pressure vacuum breaker. So this is kind of an intermediate component that's needed to basically prevent um, contaminated water to backflow back into your house. These are actually required by code. So if you're going to install an irrigation system yourself or have a plumber do it, definitely ensure that this is installed as part of that. From the shutoff valve, we've got PVC running, elbows down, and goes straight into the ground there. So this is our main line that's going to feed our irrigation box. Um, you'll notice that I've got this taped up. That's an important thing. If you're going to expose PVC to UV rays or sunlight, you definitely want to protect them, either using something like the Sure Tape or using acrylic paint, because what will happen is that PVC will degrade from the UV exposure and you're going to have problems down the line. I do yourself a favor and protect that. So this PVC is running probably a good foot underground and it runs over to a valve box. And this is another good point. When you're planning where to put your valve box, think ahead because initially when I put this here, there weren't any trees here. So that main line is feeding three valves. And you'll notice that there's some wires coming out of each valve, out of the solenoid. And those wires actually feed back, again, underground, come up out of the ground, and they feed up to this controller box. This is just a simple orbit six station controller box. These are vital to your sprinkler system. This is what allows um, commands basically to be sent back to the valves to open and close um, based on your timing that you set up here. They open this up, we can see the wires feeding in. So here you can see I've got three, my three valve wires feeding into those stations. And then you have a common wire as well. So real basic on that. And then this unit, you don't have to hardwire it anywhere, it just plugs into a receptacle. So pretty simple. From that valve box, we've got three quarter inch schedule 40 PVC running to three different zones in my yard. So those lines that run between your sprinkler heads in your zones and your valve are called lateral lines. And as you go longer in distance, your pressure is gonna drop. So good idea to go with at least three quarter inch. If you drop down to half inch, you're not gonna have enough pressure potentially to feed water to all your various zones. So I'm actually gonna show you an aerial shot of my yard, just so high level you can see how those three zones are configured. If you're just starting out um, and you don't have plantings in the ground, that's the best time to plant for irrigation. Get that area trenched, lay in your lines, so you don't have to worry about that later. It's pretty destructive to go and trench everything up once you've got a lot of trees growing in. So try to do that early 
Initially, when I landscaped my yard, it was not fruit trees. None of this existed. It was just a huge lawn area. I'll show you a picture of what it looked like back then. So I had three huge lawn zones. So I leveraged what I had basically to convert that to an irrigation system that made sense for trees. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, pretty simple if you're dealing with the same situation, you've got an existing uh, sprinkler system and you're converting that lawn area to garden. A really simple thing you can do here is just unscrew that sprinkler head from the riser and instead put on this elbow, threaded elbow, can use a converter like I've got here. I picked up this part from Drip Depot. Uh, you're likely not going to find something like this at the big box stores. It's pretty specialized, but it screws into the threaded elbow. And then on the other side, you attach your poly tubing. So that way you can go from three quarter inch PVC to a half inch poly. And you can see that too. I've got a shut off valve so if I needed to make repairs um, I can turn this off. So I believe I had probably seven sprinkler heads or so to each zone. So half of those I just capped off and then the other half I used um, this type of approach where I converted it to poly tubing. And I did that so that I could pretty much get even flow. So we're going to take a look at the irrigation system on my third zone in action. The back here. So what did I go with polytubing over PVC? A couple things come to mind. One is, as I mentioned before, PVC degrades in full sunlight. I don't necessarily want to bury my lines to my trees underground. It's harder to make modifications to, make repairs to, with it buried. If I keep it above ground, it's going to suffer from UV exposure and then it's not going to last very long. I could paint all that PVC and then the other issue is you can step on the lines and crack them. They're more prone to breaking. Dealing with this kind of material is really simple. If you step on it, no big deal. It's not going to break. It's easy for me to get to and make adjustments if I need to. Recommendations are that you go to uh, 30 PSI if you're going to be using polytubing and quarter inch drip line, I don't use one. And the reason for that is if I did, given the linear feet involved, my pressure would not be enough to get to the end of the line if I were to reduce it. So instead I've got this just running as is. Nothing is down regulating the pressure. I wouldn't recommend doing that if you've got a short run, but if you've got something like me where you have, you know, more than 800 linear feet feeding your zones, you don't have to worry about it being excessive. Irrigation is really a combination of two things, right? Volume and duration. So what you don't have in volume, as far as pressure in your lines, you make up for in duration. Within one hour, this is going to be flooding this area really well for these trees. Your goal is to get down as much volume of water in the smallest amount of time, then you would not want to go with this type of setup. You would want something high pressure. You'd probably want one inch lateral lines feeding your irrigation system. And then, you know, emitters that could drop down maybe two gallons per minute. So if you were to use just an elbow, basically having no emitter on it and just directing the full pressure in the quarter inch line into the ground, you're not going to be able to adjust, you know, the flow rate. It is what it is. If you want to adjust flow rate, then you would want to go with something like this. Okay, this is a uh, T basically that has a male end, male threaded part, and then a bubbler, half inch bubbler on top that you can actually close in all the way if you want to. or open it more fully to increase the water volume. Just another example, slightly different. So one quarter inch drip line was not enough to really flood this mature tree. This is my bear's lime. Instead of punching one hole in my polytubing, I punched three. And I have three different lines of microtubing 
around the tree, you know, here, there, and also over there. Feeding water in so it really floods the root zone. We're not even using a bubbler here, right? We're just using, again, an elbow. Just the fitting that you would typically use to change the direction of your microtubing. But I'm using this as my emitter head, basically the full flow of the water. And it's doing an excellent job flooding the tree. This is a bit unorthodox in how I'm using the drip line, but certainly an approach you can take. And really just want to dispel the myth that you have to use bubblers. Certainly not suggesting that everyone should use polytubing, just that if you do prefer using that material, you know, for its flexibility and things like that, um, that you can definitely get enough water down to properly hydrate your trees. Hopefully this has given you some insights or ideas into how to irrigate your fruit trees in your yard. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.